My name is Bruce. I work for the Industrial Airline User Group. We are a group of companies that use airline for enterprise purposes. And uh, together we, uh, together with member of the OTP team here, uh, Lucas Larsen, uh, we represent the OTP team from Ericsson to, uh, to bring to you the latest news from uh, the OTP. So Lucas will tell you about uh, the technical uh, uh, items, the focus area, and what's on uh, the main and master track, and after that, uh, some bit about the community side of uh, the OTP. So, yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, so, uh, some of the things we've been working on on the last years and going forward, uh, I'll have to have a look at to see what we're doing. So, we're focusing a lot, it's been a lot of performance focus at the Alang OTP team for the last year or so, the kind of customers uh, that we've been working with and the kind of problems that we're trying to solve has been, at the moment, been working on both in, in both directions of scaling. So we've been working a lot of small systems, small embedded devices, so making the Allen Watch machine really, really tiny uh, in that sense. And we're also working with customers that are scaling hugely into the cloud and getting the virtual machine to work better in a virtualized environment. Uh, some of the examples of the things that have come out of this is that we've been doing a complete rewrite of the way that time is handled in the Erlang virtual machine uh, in order to both improve scaling on huge systems and in order to better deal with software that's been printed onto the hardware in the factories of uh, things so that uh, we can deal with both of these scenarios. Uh, please come to my talk later this uh, before lunch if you want to get more details about that. Uh, we're continuing our work with making the virtual machine more responsive by making more trappable BIFs. We're looking deeply at the garbage collector to make it work better, faster, all the good stuff. Uh, in, I think it was 17.2 or something like that, we introduced something called Eager Check IO, which is a feature where we can more uh, decrease the latency of your inbound TCP, UDP packets or whatnot when they're delivered into user space. Uh, this feature will be enabled by default in 18, I believe. Uh, we're looking at ways to reduce the amount of message passing, that uh, the message copying that goes on in the virtual machine so that you can uh, do message passing more efficient. And we're continuing on with the JIT compilation work that we've been doing now for what is it, four years or something. Uh, hopefully, any year now it will be done, we hope. Uh, so specifically, so I, I believe on Wednesday, in four days' time, five days' time, there will be a 17.5 release. And uh, yeah, 31st of March, uh, usually we keep those uh, dates. Uh, nothing major happening, just bug fixes, lots of user contributions as always, and we're very grateful uh, for all of them. Uh, specifically, we've fixed some bugs in the crypto language and SSL to make that work, and a lot of different applications. Going on to the next one. Uh, on the master track, we have some more interesting things going on. So I don't know if you noticed, but I think it was on Wednesday we pushed a, the first release candidate for 18.0 that you can go out and try. We encourage you to try it. We release these things early in order for us to detect backward incompatibility issues and also performance issues with these things. So if you have the possibility, please try it and get back to us to see what is working and so on. We've made mistakes before when it comes to backwards compatibility and people not working that we thought like, ah, this is not a problem. It's no problem if we break this, but it turns out to be huge problems for people. So please get back to us. There will be another release candidate uh, later on in May and so on. Uh, yeah, in, in, I guess, the major things that we've been working on for the master track is to complete the implementation of uh, maps. Uh, so we have a, a backend for larger maps for, I think they've been testing with something like a couple of million of keys in the maps and it seems to be quite, uh, working quite nicely. Uh, and also the timing things, as I said, will be going into that track. Uh, yeah, and some crypto changes that I don't know much about. Uh, for the long term uh, plans, uh, we're looking a lot at virtualization at the moment, so the beam running inside some kind of virtual machine, uh, abstracting away the hardware uh, things, and there will be most probably 
in 19 and 20 and so on, coming a lot of changes to make it work better and adapt it better to that kind of environment. Uh, we're also most probably going to look closer at the distribution and the way that works in order to get more of a heterogeneous uh, cluster up and running where you don't have to have a fully connected mesh uh, and so on. Uh, also, introspection in the virtual machine is very important to us, and we will most probably add supports for LTTNG Linux tracing into the VM as well to complement the system tap and D-Trace support. Uh, we're going to extend the build support so that it becomes easier to build the Allen virtual machine for really, really tiny devices. As I said before, we're working a lot with small devices. So in order to integrate it better into build tools such as Yocto and so on, to, and to strip the Allen virtual machine into its minimum so that you can get it into a two megabyte flash drive or whatever you won't need uh, to get in there. Work on documentation, file, I.O., and so on is ongoing. Uh, so that's our focus area for the next, I don't know, year, two years, uh, and then whatever other obstacles we bump into to the road. These plans tend to be true until I step off the stage and then they change, so it's always uh, different things every week. And also things are happening around the Erlang community. Uh, the industry Erlang user group set up a uh, community manager uh, to sit together with the OTB team. And we want to see improved cooperation between the open source community and uh, what's, hap what's happening outside of Ericsson. Uh, specifically, we will have uh, soon a license change from the existing public Erlon public license to Apache public license version 2. Uh, and I think uh, last week or a couple of days ago, Kenneth just sent out an email to all of the contributors of uh, uh, Erlang OTP. And it's really important uh, that all of the contributors reply to that email. So. Um, uh, once we have all uh, the replies back, we can go on, move on with the process, and hopefully we have the license change with, along with the 18 release. And also, we're looking into a issue tracker to replace the existing Erlang bugs uh, mailing list. Uh, uh, it's one of the initiatives of the industry Erlang user group to improve the interaction between open source community. And uh, also, uh, the industry airline user group is helping OTP team to look into a package manager for airline. And uh, um, also, um, the airline central website uh, for the community uh, set up by the industry airline user group in order to provide a place for uh, open source users to uh, sort of a better place for airline community out there. Right, and then a network, for, a network of trust, which means OTP team wants to extend uh, the development in the long run. Uh, that means to allow contributors from outside to help with the development. Uh, that means better contributions and quicker adoptions and, and so on. And I'd like to uh, introduce quickly about the industrial airline user group. Today we are 10 enterprise airline users, and together we want to secure the future health, well-being, and commercial success outside of Ericsson. Today we're 10 airline companies, and we plan to grow in numbers, and hopefully uh, when, we tr when we get to 20 members, we transform into a airline software foundation. From there, we can better support airline in the long run. And we are uh, welcoming new members to join. So if you love airline and you want to see uh, the future success of airline, please come to us. And we, are, uh, we welcome uh, new companies to join. Our mission is three aspects. We want to make airline more open source, uh, better interaction with the community, and we want to have a better perception and image of airline uh, to be able to compete with other major languages in the 21st century. And also the technical uh, roadmaps in terms of tools, libraries, and productivity. So um, uh, that's the industry airline use group. 
Uh, I hope to talk to you during the, uh, during the day. And uh, yeah, uh, that was the news from OTP team. I uh, hope you have a good day in conference in the Erlang Factory conference. Any questions? Okay, uh, Simon. Oh, sorry. Okay, so we had a question in the back. How sophisticated is the JIT thing you're working on compared to Java? Uh, it's a baby in comparison. Uh, I mean, they've spent more man years than I could dream of spending on uh, doing this. Uh, it, it, it's in the working stages. At the moment, we just want to have something that it's an improvement on the way that it works today. And then we'll have to build up on that. Uh, the, as far as I remember, the latest performance figures is that it's somewhere just in the ballpark of how what you get with your hype compiler system, uh, something like that. Uh, the really nice thing about it is that the way that it works is that we can most probably just in time compile the BIFs that we all talked and love and talked about before, uh, so that we can get the optimizations and the code paths to work much better when doing mathematics and so on, and it should be quite easily to extend to that. So it's a, it's a very interesting piece of technology, I think, and it shows quite the great focus. When it will be done, I have no idea. Uh, I think it, it's about time it should be. I have one question. Um, there were a lot of uh, you know, patches in the WhatsApp, which WhatsApp have released. Uh, are they slowly being integrated in the main branch? Uh, the ones that we can take without breaking backwards, but compatibility, I believe we have taken already. Uh, all the ones that we've looked at so far have some specific uh, features that are good for their system, but cannot be applied in a general sense of things. With these timing, time changes now, one of the large big bottlenecks in the virtual machine that they fixed have been fixed. Uh, as far as I remember, uh, I don't remember all of them by heart, but that's my understanding of it anyway. And they have some other patches in Amnesia and so on that I don't understand or know about. But uh, I think we've taken the ones that we can at the moment. Uh, Kenji? Yeah. yeah, one of the things um, I have to make a comment, comment that I, I, I'd like to request to the OTP team is that uh, Please make 17.4.1 a uh, true release or something like that if you think it's really an improvement. Not just a git tag, please. Um, one, of the, one of my friends, um, uh, Jimmy Ogany, who's a maintainer of the FreeBSD ports of Earn, uh, has the difficulties on, uh, um, what do you say, making, those, um, making, making his port stuff from um, non-official git stuff, git-like git builds, so please, do make all those uh, release those, those patched release, releases as the true releases, and uh, I hope the um, this process will be improved on the 18 point, uh, 18. Thank you. I think if you want to have that, then it's an excellent opportunity for the open source community to do that. I don't think that the minor releases and so on, uh, we will publish them on the website. So having said that, I'm not involved in that process, so I don't know. It might happen, but it's a perfect, it's very easy to do and do the scripting. It just, uh, it, for us, getting a, pushing a git tag is no work, getting the release cycle and so on, because we have quite high verification requirements on when we do these releases. Uh, okay. Simon had a uh, small announcement first. Thank you. Sorry, it's not a question. It was an, an announcement. We're doing some work at Kent to try and move the university into the 21st century and so build some e-learning for, um, for Erlang. We've got some members of the community who have, have recorded some master classes, which I hope we're going to release quite soon. But in particular, we've got the draft of a beta version of a MOOC for Erlang which we'd like some, some beta testers from the community to join in. We're going to run, it's, not, it's neither M nor O, so it's an OCK, if you like. It's an online course, which will cover probably the functional part of Erlang, not the whole thing for this, um, for this pilot. It'll be a three-week pilot in the second half of May. 
If you have, if you yourself or you have colleagues who want to learn about Erlang from scratch and be part of this, please let me know. My e email is sjt at kent.ac.uk, and I'm around today. We're looking for between 10 and 20 people to take part in this, and then we hopefully can produce a really good, massive, open online course for Erlang to try and, and, and match what people have got for Scala and other languages. So do, do join, but it is, it is a beta, so it'll be a little bit of a rocky road, but we hope that your participation can help us produce a really very good course.